All right, so in today's video, we're going to have a look at how you can effectively and easily switch through different presets, different sounds you've prepared for a live show. And there's many possible applications here. I'm thinking of maybe you're a keyboard player, you play in a band or on your own, and you have different patches for different songs, and you want to be able to easily switch between them, maybe in sequence even, and you want to use Ableton to do so. I'm going to show you my method to doing so. I have a new project here, and uh, you can do this on a multi-track basis if you want to. I I think it's easier and more elegant to just keep it simple and use just one track. So that is going to be my track here. And so the first thing I'm going to want to be doing is I'm going to load different kinds of sounds onto that one track. And uh, you probably know that you can do that by using an instrument rack. So let's drag that in here. Let's show the chain list. And here we can put all of our devices. So I have a third party synthesizer I'm using all the time. It's called Vital. I'm going to drag it here and notice, by the way, the beauty beautiful color scheme, it looks exactly the same as Ableton. So is that important? No, probably not. Maybe yes, for me it is. I, li I like something beautiful to look at while working on my sounds. And then um, I'm just going to use some of these stock devices here in Ableton. Uh, let's choose this one, for instance, and put it there. Okay, so you could go as complex as you wanted. You could fill this up with instruments if you have a long life set. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'm just going to keep it to two sounds. The thing now is if we play some notes, I'm going to use my computer keyboard to do so. So, as you can hear, it's triggering both devices at the same time, which is not what we want, right? Maybe the first device is the sound we want to play on our first song, and then the second device we want to play in our second song. We don't want to trigger them both at the same time. And so to do so, we have a variety of options. We could use the key pane here. That's your classic keyboard split, right? You could assign a certain octave or group of octaves of your keyboard to a certain sound and another group to another. So you could just say everything below C C3 triggers Vital and everything above C3 triggers Ableton internal sound, right? This is just Ableton. If I move down one octave, it's just Vital. But let's say you want to preserve the whole range of your keyboard for just one sound at a time. Well, you could use Velocity, same as before. Maybe notes you play more softly trigger just one kind of sound and notes you play more hardly trigger another kind of sound. But let's say you also want to preserve the full dynamic range of your keyboard for one sound at a time. But in that case, your only other option besides height, which effectively is nothing useful for us, is to use the chain feature. And chain basically assigns a value or range to each device. So let me show you what that means. I can just drag this here and if I click it says 0 to 7. So values between 0 and 7 of this chain parameter are going to trigger vital and uh, let's say that maybe values between 8 and 15 are going to trigger Ableton's stock sound. And up here you have this blue thing which is the chain selector and you can move that around and right now it's uh, set to somewhere between 8 and 16 which means if I play something, I'm triggering Ableton's internal sound. If I move this down somewhere between 0 and 7, it triggers Ableton. Right, so this at its core is the trick. Now, we need to make it so that we can actually use it live because you don't want to be grabbing your mouse and moving things around while you are performing, right? So to do so, we need to create some empty MIDI clips. I'm just going to do so by double clicking here. Then I'm going to go to this tool tab here. I'm going to select instrument rack, then chain selector. By the way, the chain selector is this blue guy. So we're automating effectively its value. So I'm going to just click insert an automation point here, drag it all back to zero, zero being in between zero and seven, right? So if I now launch this clip, it's an empty clip, so no notes are going to be played back, but it has that automation written into it. So as you can see, there's a red point here now. That means that whenever I press this and I launch this clip, it's going to set the chain selector value to zero. And you see where this is going. I can create a second clip and this time we're going to write in a value of eight so that when I launch my second clip, as you can see, this guy moved over to eight and now it's in that second range so it's going to trigger Ableton's internal sound and not Vital. Beautiful! So that's the first step. The second step to making this usable live is you want to find a way to assign launching these clips to some sort of a MIDI controller. But if you don't have one, let me rephrase that. If you have a MIDI controller that's basically just keys and doesn't have any knobs, any buttons, anything else, you know, just maybe a small keyboard, then fear not because you can 
also use your computer keyboard. Ableton has that feature as well. So you want to go here to where it says key. Um, you want to assign the upwards arrow to maybe say A. The downwards arrow you might want to assign to S. And then maybe the track launch button you want to assign to D. And you're doing the assignments by just clicking on the control with your mouse and then pressing the key on your keyboard that you want to assign that control to. Good, so we can exit key now and I'm going to press S. And as you can see, it moves downwards. Press A, it moves upwards. And so I can select whichever clip I want to launch and then I press D and I launch that clip, right? So you can get a lot of sounds like this. And let me just hide my input output section here. I'm just gonna add some scenes by pressing Command I. Right, so I could just fill up these scenes with some empty clips, write in the correct automation value so that the chain selector moves accordingly, and then I can just put all of my sounds in here, and then I can use my uh, keys on my computer keyboard to move down or up and launch my sounds. Or if you have a controller like this at your disposal, you can assign those by pressing Command M, enter the MIDI menu here. Same thing, you press the upwards arrow and then you press the control on your controller you want to assign to that and you're good to go. So yeah, if this was helpful to you, please let me know in the comments. And if you have any more questions, write me a comment as well. Always happy to help. And don't forget to show this video to any friends of yours who you think might benefit from it as well. Like, subscribe if you want to help the channel grow. And yeah, thank you again. And so much for watching and I'll see you one week from now on the next video. Take care.